Hey everyone, it's uh, Pup Twigs here from Orlando, Florida, and joining me today from South Windsor, Connecticut, I've got Pup Neo. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thanks, and you? I am doing really good here. So I always like to find out the background on uh, a pup's name and their colors they choose for their hood. So I'm going to throw that out to you first. You know, how did you get Pup Neo? And tell me a little bit about your hood colors. Well, prior to Pup Neo, I'll throw this out there too, I was Pup Zix and I was purple because I like the color purple. But then I decided not to use my gaming alias mm -hmm. as my name in case people found my social media through my username. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Neo, you know, brown, white, and pink are the colors of Neapolitan ice cream. I love ice cream, so... Neo Ooh. Neapolitan people think Neo from the Matrix or Neoprene, mm -hmm. but it's more so just I like ice cream, <laughs> um, and there's there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. <laughs> so, how long have you now been uh, in the pup community? I've been active in the community for about three years. I started becoming one four years ago in June of 2020. That that seems to be a, a starting point for a lot, and I'm guessing it's because we all got locked down because of mm -hmm. COVID, and we had to find something to do at home, and this is this is what it was. Yep. <laughs> well, in those three dash four years, what have you? What has been the easiest part of being a pup, and then what has been the most difficult part? By my answer is going to be for both halves of that question is okay. getting to know people, becoming friends with people. I, there are some people that I could just run right up to, say hello, mm -hmm. we immediately connect, and then that's just the start of a new friendship in the pup community. And then there's other pups. I look over, see them, they see me, neither of us want to like go over to each other, so we think, oh... Neither one's interested, so it's kind of both easy for me to make pup friends and hard for me to make pup friends because I'm shy at first, but then once you get me going, I don't stop talking. Yeah, that I, I'm <laughs> not the shy one, but but boy, I I'm a talker and stuff, and mm -hmm. I the, when I'm out, it's just like that social butterfly just going everywhere and everything. And my my husband, pup Smokey, is just completely different. He's very shy, even with the hood on. He's still not much of a talker, but he, he's a little mm -hmm. better about approaching people when he's got his pup persona on than he is when he's a human. Yeah. So is there anything, if you had the ability to do it, that you would want to change about our community? Uh, I, I'd like the community to feel a bit more inclusive. There are some events that I myself have gone to, and there's the group of, like, just an example, five other pups and they're off there over there doing their thing. And, you know, maybe I'll try to make an advance or my partner will try to make an advance. They'll kind of just do the small talk. And then, well, okay, we, we got to go this way. And I'm like, all right, and not even offer to join them. So I feel like if the pup community could work just a little bit on their inclusivity, like if I could change that. Yeah, and that, that becomes, I, I think that's a very popular thing that, that I've found doing this podcast that we want is that uh, better inclusive inclusivity of, of it because I mean, down here in our groups, we do have a dragon, we do have a cow, mm -hmm. um, but the majority, I say 96 to 97% are all men, male. Yeah. And I want to get more females in that even, mm -hmm. you know, we need a cat. We need all this stuff to come in and, and be a part of our groups. We have, um, not actively joining, but around this area, I know a couple ponies, and I know 
you know, a calf or a cow, whatever they want to go by. Um, and I think it's, it's interesting. I actually saw in this, and I'm bringing up, like, I saw my first cow a month ago at an event that I went to. And I was like, I never thought of that, you know, include all types oh, yeah, of animal species. Does, but it's, mm -hmm. it's cool to see that. So if you knew there was somebody in your group that was just now thinking about getting into pup play, what advice would you want to give them? So I advise don't immediately rush to get top gear because yes. you might find out it's not something you want to do. You might just want to be associated with your fellow pups. You don't actually want to be one. Um, I always, my trick was, you know, 60, 70 bucks for a whole set off Amazon. Yeah. Neoprene, that collar, harness, hood, little armbands if you want, because, you know, whatever you want to wear. It, it doesn't have, you don't have to immediately go out to Mr. S or Mr. Bear or find a person on Etsy. I mean, yeah, support your local artist on Etsy, go ahead. But you really don't need top of the line gear or gear at all to actively in the pup community when i was at boston pride last year there were people that were part of the pup community not necessarily you know handlers or sirs but they were there identifying as pups simply wearing a collar with their name yeah. on it yeah they a lot of people think it's a misconception that you have to have the pup hood and all this stuff but you don't you can still be a pup and not have to have the gear test it out see if it's what you like before you start investing in the the gear because we know it can be very expensive yep it can be it uh most recently almost 600 hundred dollar purchase <laughs> oh I, I just this is uh probably less than a uh, two months old this hood uh that i got from mr s and then when i got it i realized i ordered um a friskies which is the brand the type and i was supposed to order the the canine because the so canine comes with whiskers Mm -hmm. So I don't have those. <laughs> I've had to go. I went and reordered a second one now that'll be here uh, beginning of next month. So in, in the course of a month's time, I've ordered two pup hoods for Mr. S. Leather and it gets expensive. And it, it, I have ordered, I actually started in September of 2020. So, you know, three months after that's definitely knowing, you know, that 90 day trial, I want to beat one. Yeah. I'm going to get myself some nice, good gear and, you know, don't, financially burden yourself i kind of did that to myself i yes you know it took me almost i know a year to pay off 400 dollars credit card because i make like the little payments oh, oh I, 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 get you. <laughs> I know it's expensive but i've ordered i have uh, allegedly some stuff that's going to be coming today shortly after this and um it's a whole set that was that was a whole set at once neo was a whole set at once um oh, nice two other hoods i regret not getting ear holes on this one so my new one that's coming is gonna have ear holes i'm afraid to punch my own holes i don't want to yeah. ruin because this is the like scratchy neoprene <laughs> yeah no i i, I got you and, and it's just it's continuous you never you always want to change up a little bit because you don't want to wear the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. so you have to have a whole closet full of gear i've started <laughs> now with with contacts i've got uh, mm -hmm. a set now that completely white out my eyes mm -hmm. and then i got a set in just came in yesterday that are uv so they glow under uv light oh that's cool so i i can't wait till uh till i can go out in those and everything so you know back to pup neo and stuff what brings you the most joy out of pup play i just like the headspace escape from you know the real world for just a little bit mm -hmm. even if it is those small three to four hour events that we go to um it's it actually it really helps me become you know make friends with like-minded people like i said yeah. i'm both shy and very social at the same time once i get warmed up to you it's passionate conversation here trails off to this i have adhd so midway through a topic i'll be like which reminds me of this <laughs> yes i hear you <laughs> so I, it's it, it allows me to it allows me to make friends easier good good and, well, mm -hmm. i know not everyone has it but do you have any kind of play toys that you like um when it comes to pup play i don't have any like 
squeaky toys or anything or ropes or anything, but I do have, I'm a plushie fanatic, so these are just a couple of Oh, them. sweet. So, got a little boba tea, and I got a little stitch. Oh, I And, love um, it. Love it. Well, good. So, yeah, so I like, I like plushies. Plushies are my favorite. Um, and, I have and a there's whole, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I have a whole hammock in the other room full of them, so. Yeah, I, uh, I talked to a pup that was uh, out of uh, California that she makes a lot of stuff. And, and um, I went to her website And the one thing, I mean, I don't have play toys either, but this one thing that she made for me, it's a little rubber ducky that's in a harness and a pup hood. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. And and that, I just, that sits right here by my computer. So it's there with me every time I do a podcast, because that is my favorite. I mean, that she, she did an amazing job with that rubber ducky. So on more of a, a, a serious note, when you think about, being able to get in that pup headspace, what has it done for your mental health? It is a very helpful de-stressor from the day. Agree. Um, you know, lots of people have many worries, finances, place to live, job. For me, my job is very physically tasking. Mm -hmm. um, it's four 10-hour shifts in a warehouse. Oh, Um, man. thankfully, I get a three-day decompress on the weekends. So... Usually on Fridays, I hood up and hang out and just play video games, which adds to de-stressing. And it's just find other pups to talk to that are in, like, you know, the discords that I use, the discord Mm -hmm. servers that I use. Um, actively chatting that with them on Telegram as well. So it just allows me to relax, decompress, and just enjoy the now versus what's going to happen later. And I think it's pretty common. A lot of pups love the video games uh, and everything. So I'm guessing that is one of your hobbies. Uh, Yes. do you have any other hobbies that you like to do around uh, South Windsor? Um, I actively this year have always loved to bike and hike. Got a bicycle Good. for Christmas and have a lot. There's a lot of trail bike trails and mountain trails around here in Connecticut. Um, quite a few within 10, 20 minutes of me, some that I could drive over to a state or two, you know, Massachusetts above me and go there. Yeah. Um, but I plan to, yeah, I like to go like hiking. Well, and that's good. You, you got the mixture of both. You get to stay indoors and play video games, and then you get to get out and, and explore nature and stuff. So uh, I love being outside, but uh, I do spend a lot of time indoors as well. So, but I'm not one of the video game. Uh, my, my husband <laughs> plays all the time. It's, he got me excited with uh, when Fortnite came out with the uh, Lady Gaga uh, stuff. Oh, yes. Because uh, I'm a huge fan of hers. And love her. I said, I almost have to download Fortnite to get that, but I'll, I'll just enjoy it through <laughs> you. So, because exactly. I know I won't ever use it. <laughs> right. Um, oh, oh, go ahead. I, I, sorry. I do also like, I'm a, I'm a big person, a big uh, shop therapy person. You know, within means, I don't go all out, I don't max out the credit card. Um, my ther shop therapy is going out and getting some new clothes, getting some food for the week for work. Like, I go to yes. Aldi, I get my deli meats and my sandwich bread and whatever condiments I want to put on it for work. Um, go to Costco, get what I need, get their big $10 pizza, eat Oh, at home. yes. <laughs> so it's just, um, Fridays are my decompress day. Saturdays and Sundays are whatever comes to mind. My partner and I are going to go out and do it. Or if he wants sleeping, cause he's been working all day Friday and wants to sleep in Saturday, I'll go out and do some quick bang, boom, hour later, I'm home. And then If we want to go out again later, we'll go out again later. So, sounds like a, a awesome. I, I love those. Those weekends are fantastic. So what about uh, pets? Do you have any pets of your own? So I have, and they aren't down here, obviously. They are, um, I have a puppy. She's about, she's going to be two, which oh. she shares a birthday with me, April oh, 24th. Nice. So she's going to be two this year. Um, her name is Callie. She's She's a weird mix. She's like a hug and chihuahua with some oh, wow. Eskimo dog, beagle. I did the, the I did the um 
a wisdom test yes. through them. And she's Pug Chihuahua. If you look at her face, you look at it at a certain angle, you see the pug, you see the Chihuahua and the snout. Um, she's okay. Brindle, which is the like American pit bull in her. She's uh -huh. got like these uh, little wispy back like hind legs, which is the Eskimo dog. Um, very powerful bark. So, and then I've got two cats. One is like a gray striped tabby with some calico in her because she's got like patches of like peach, white, and black. And then she's got stripes and gray and white. Mm -hmm. And then we have a gray short hair slash kind of like a tuxedo. And he's a lanky guy. He's like long, oh my longer than my camera will show me. Um, And he's, he's weird. I don't know how to explain it. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's he, he, he like stares out into space. It just chills, but they all get along. We have two other dogs. One's a lab mix. One's a pit lab mix. Um, so we've got. I live with my parents, so it's those are their dogs, and then the cat and the cats and one dog. They're cool. mine and my partner's, yeah. but everyone gets along. Nobody Good. fights. So, um, they're indoor cats too. So they step foot outside, and they're like, "Ew, back in Ew, the house." Yeah, no, <laughs> I hear you. I got. <laughs> I've got three cats of my own, so yeah, they no, they don't go outside. They're indoors strictly. So, so what about events going on in your area? Are there are there some in your town, or do you have to travel to uh, events? So, we have some events that are pup friendly that happen at the Shea S in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. Um, most of those are more obviously they're they're twenty one and older because they do have a bar. Mm -hmm. Um. But they are, there are, you know, right, safe for work and the not safe ones um, that happen there. If you go to Shea S and you look at their calendar, you can see what goes on. They have drag nights there. I show up in my pup hood for the drag nights. It's kind of fun. Oh, of course. Um, the other event that we have, which they have on a monthly basis, which is usually on the first Friday of every month, is Connecticut Pets and Handlers, CTPAH. Um, that event is usually hosted by a pup. Her name is Starlight. Okay. Um, she is awesome. Um, also she only, she does her own DJing. Oh, nice. So she does her own DJing for the event. It's a little small event. It's like maybe 20, 30 of us that show up. Um, that event happens down at the York Street Cafe in New Haven, Connecticut. And it's actually happening tonight from 9 to 1130. Oh, um, man. I believe they also do something, some like advice hour around eight, right before mm -hmm. it happens. Uh, but that one is um a safe for work event with a little play pad and just pop out and have fun. Um, they do charge a ten dollar cover to enter. You get a little bit. I wish I had brought it in here. They give you a little armband that says Puppy Pride. It glows in the dark and it's got a bunch of little black paw prints on it. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> so those are the two big events that happen down here. Um, yeah, down in Connecticut that I'm aware of. Okay. So there are a few that they do post in the Telegram group that I use, but I believe those are more out of state. Because it's, oh, okay. it's a it's a it's like a um you know quad state area mm -hmm. with maybe even little bits from Vermont and New Hampshire, but like Rhode Island, Mass, and the edge of New York, closest to Connecticut, is where most of the pups come from to Connecticut. Okay, all right. Well, well, now's the time if um um you have a specific question that you could ask another pup. Uh, do you have anything in mind that you would want to ask? This was a tough question to think of an answer. Um, I could think of one. Really, don't have one because okay, and, it's, and it, it okay. was it was it was a tough one to think of. Um, yeah, I do not have one, unfortunately. Okay. Well, the uh, I had a, a pup that I interviewed a day before yesterday, a pup a Momo from Overland Park, Kansas, Ooh. and uh, uh, their question was. How are you going to push for inclusion within our community to make sure we're honoring all aspects of pet play? I think that we need to have devised, planned meetings with, uh, you know, local and state government legislatures. Let them know the positive sides, not what the 
um, you know, radical social media's show of pup play, that there mm-hmm. are sides to it that are friendly to everyone. There is no harm in it. It's part of the LGBT. It's part of pride as well. That's right. Um, I just think that we as a community need to make more pushes, including myself, you know, being a shy person I am, speaking up to your you know, local and state government and let them, and, you know, make events. Like when Pride Month comes around is the biggest one. Um, last year, I showed up to five or six Pride events with a few, a small like conglomerate of us, like six or seven mm-hmm. to show it. Everybody loved us. So oh, I just yeah. want to put that out there for the people that are nervous. Um, it all depends on where you live too. You got to be careful of that. If your state is, you know, LGBT friendly, show up in a pup hood, dress appropriately. There yeah. are children around. Um, show up in a pup hood, show us that we mean no harm. We're just having fun, being a little goofy. Um, I think that would put us out there more as a non-threatening I, I agree with you on that, yes. <laughs> so if uh, someone wanted to reach out to you um, because they saw you here, how could they reach you? What social media, social media would you like to share? So across three platforms that I use, um, Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter, or X, whichever one you prefer to mm-hmm. call it, it is at pup neo 95 no underscores no spaces p-u-p-n-e-o nine five all right easy enough and my everything my messages are open um if i don't respond to them i'm probably working um i'll shoot you a message back you know if you just want to say hi or anything um yep that, those, right. are the, those are the three best ones to reach me on. Reach you. Okay. All right. Uh, any any last words from uh, Pup Neil before we uh, end this? Uh, it's been a pleasure joining. I felt honored a week ago when I saw your post on Facebook. Um, you know, even though Connecticut wasn't listed, you know, I've been making strides to just take a shot, see what happens. And you invited me. It felt great. Um really don't have anything else to say this this has been a nice little chat getting to know people hope to uh i'm gonna take some time to actually look at the other podcasts you've done i did get a chance to with work being so busy oh of course sorry the busy season um i actually you know put you out there to some of my friends when i got excited and i was like i'm gonna be on a podcast next friday and i go oh who and i said pup twigs and oh <laughs> what's it called that's what i asked you what is it and I took uh-huh. it. they're like oh i'm gonna watch some of those and see how they are so good yeah that well, is, um, it, it has that been is. an absolute honor and pleasure having you on here i've enjoyed it I, I love learning about pups from everywhere um and my goal this year is to Make sure I hit pups in all 50 states of the U.S. And uh, uh, yes, I'd already interviewed one from Connecticut, but I'm great. I will re-interview from every state. I don't care. I just like the perspective from different <laughs> pups on our community. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a very simple question pertaining to the asking the next pup. Oh, Pretty sure. sure it's probably been asked before. because It's a very common question. You know, it's the always, if you had a chance to meet someone, who would it be within the pup community? Who do you uh-huh. idolize? You know, who who has been your dream pup to see? Be it just say hi, autograph, shake a hand, shake a tail, bark with them. Um, personally, for me, um, is there's, there's, there's a lot of pups out there I'd like to meet. My top two being Amp and Boudet. They're there, my two. Boudet was one of the, like, staples that got me into pup play. Oh, nice. From, uh, yeah, so. And then Amp, he's the more descriptive one. He gives okay. you, like, all the details of pup play and yeah. awesome. how to get into it. You know, basically what we've discussed here, he'd be doing the same stuff in more, in much more detail. So oh, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a very awesome person as well, and a pup. Well, very cool. Well, uh, again, it's been awesome having you on here, and I'm sure I'll be talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.